Okay, I'm going to um, start the call. Um, Sarah, have you started the recording? Yes, I have. Okay, thank you. So, hi everyone and welcome to our December call, our council call. Um, for those of you that might have missed that, we have got Smart Cloud up today. Um, and I've also put in the window the link to the council private area where we've also uploaded the presentation. Um, today, I've basically put the call around the theme really of where we're going to kind of go in 2015 and some proposals um, from BACD and Co. We've got Rod on the call today, which some, some of you have met Rod before. And Rod's just going to go through some ideas that we've kind of been discussing with some of the leaders throughout the year of the needs and kind of wants that you'd like to see changed within the community to kind of enable you to um, find things much easier um, and to use the website and make it a bit more slicker. Um, we've also got Sarah on the call from Batsy and Sarah's just going to run through some of the things that we've done with Interconnect and some of the community planning. Um, she's also going to mention to you about a survey, which is something that we would like you to, um, to get your feedback on. Um, we've also got Laura on the call and Robin, they're from BACD. I think most of you know them. Um, and Laura's just going to um, talk to you about how we can kind of get you guys engaging just a little bit more in some of the communications we send out to the community for 2015. Um, one of the things that I'm a bit aware of is we've kind of gone a bit back on the community being a little bit more led by IBM again in some directions, especially kind of with the news that are. Um, so Laura's just going to touch base on that of where we can maybe get some more contributions from you guys. So I'm going to hand over to Rod, and Rod's just going to go through some ideas of potentially moving forward in 2015, and it would be fantastic to get your feedback to see what your thoughts are. Okay, Rod, over to you. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? We can, yeah. Yeah, loud well, and clear. I was I was on mute, so I apologise. I also apologise. I mean, I'm not loud. Um, you know, sort of the funky music and stuff in the background. Um, I, I really apologise. Um, <clears throat> if I could start, I mean, essentially what we've been doing is we spend a lot of time listening to what you guys have had to say and what the members have had to say, and as a result of that, um, we've pulled um, all that input. Um, and I'm going to um, share with you today um, some of the thoughts um, that we've taken from that. Would love your input um, on these thoughts. Um, and you know what we want to take from that is you know is you know how do we drive the community forward? How do we listen to what everyone's been saying? Have we captured um, what you guys have told us? Um, so let me just run through that. So Sarah. If you'd like to move on to slide two, yep. And bear, in, bear in mind, I'm having the same problem as Harold. I cannot see your screen, so I'm mirroring you as we go through the presentation. Okay. So um, you've, you've said we need to change. So, um, and you've also given us a lot of reasons as to why we need to change. Um, we need to make, uh, and, and here's a kind of summary of most of those reasons. Um, we basically need to provide more accessibility, very much any device anywhere. Um, we need to make the community more mobile friendly so that wherever you are, whatever you're using, you can get into um, the community. We've had comments from members that um, we need to expand the social capabilities of the community, what it's able to do, how you link into your other social accounts, and how you work with those um, within the community. We've had a lot of feedback, and in fact, Sarah covered some of that just now in terms of content and the capabilities specifically members are looking for from the community, the ease of use they're looking for, um, and how they want us to tackle that. Um, we also want to be able to provide a much more intimate um, relationship with the community. And what I mean by that is 
not everyone wants to see everything. So how do we give individual members an experience that's tailored to their needs? Um, and, and how do we enable that to happen? We've had a lot of comments um, on the groups and some of the things we should be doing um, with the groups. Some of the um, leaders have commented on some of the things that um, they're um, unhappy with and they'd like to make easier. So we've been listening um, very carefully to that. And also a lot of people have said, you know, hey, um, there's a lot of gamification, etc., going on in other communities. Um, why can't we make that more um, of a play in the Tivoli user community? So I think overall what we've tried to do is very much um, listen to what you guys have said listen to what other members of the community have said, um, and we very much, um, you know, in this presentation, hopefully we've, we're, we're doing a good job of capturing that um, and summarizing um, what you've told us. I mean, I know I'm very much big picture at the moment, but is there anything I've missed? Um, would, would, would you guys agree that's a fair summary? No. I don't think so. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you, Buzz. And um, so I guess I guess from everyone on the call where 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 we're talking about, when you use the website and you use it for your meetings and you know, what you're trying to do, if there's anything that you've been trying to do and it has it, we don't have the capability or it's too hard, would it be great would be to get your feedback. And if there's like a list of something that you wish you could do when you're creating stuff, would really help us as we move forward. So as, as we go through, as we go through this presentation, if you think of anything, if you could let us know. Cool. So I can move on to. Sorry, is there a question there? That's uh, right. It's Sean O'Connor here. Um, hey, so John. We've got, we've got some stuff that we've got uh, that you guys have very kindly been updating on the sites for us. Um, so there's still some outstanding bits and pieces worth us revisiting some of those at uh, some point in the near future. Absolutely, and perhaps maybe um, once we've gone through the presentation, maybe we can just highlight them because then we can see if other people on the call have got the same um, and Rod can probably answer your questions if we have plans to make that happen soon. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, great. Fabulous. Um, okay, so if you move on to the next slide, um, one of the things that, that, that we've been told is the site at the moment is incredibly cluttered, which I would agree with. Um, it needs to be simplified. Um, it needs to be um, much easier to get to the things that people want. Um, this is not going to be the design of the new site, but um, basically if we move to the new site, um, we'd be moving to a platform which is incredibly flexible. We'd want to tidy up the design on the, on, on the site. Um, and the main goal of that tidy up would be to enable members to get to what they need to get to um, quickly and easily, um, not to make it the, the... I mean, there is so much going on on the site at the moment. I think we all agree. Um, it, it's a little bit overwhelming. So we need to simplify it. We need to make it easier. Um, we need to make it much more readily accessible and, and the information that people are really trying to get to much more readily accessible um, for the members of the community. So as I say, this is just one example um, of many, many possibilities um, on wise on the site. So Sarah, if you want to move on to the next slide. Okay. Okay. Um, one of the... Um, things we're going to be trying to do with the community is, is build a closer linkage. Um, there are an awful lot of people who are members of um, user groups that aren't using the rest of the site. There are people who are members of the site that aren't using the user groups. And one of the things we've been um, asked to do by both group, group leaders and the members is look at um, building a closer linkage to that to try and get more members as members of the groups, um, understanding what they want, which groups they want to join. Um, one of the things I'd love to be doing next year, I think there's so much going on in the groups, and indeed this is a comment we've also had from the members, is it's, it's, some of the groups are doing such cool stuff. Um, could we pick on a group? Could we 
live stream key presentations from from some um, of the group meetings? Can we find a way of recording group presentations? Because at the moment, um, I mean, there are some super things going on, but they're hidden within um, an individual group. And what we want to try and do is work very hard with the group leaders, um, very hard with it. And part of this is, is about technology. Part of it is about just um, building closer and closer relationships with the group leaders so we can understand that when you guys have got something really, really cool, we can grab that and not just share it with your group, but really leverage that um, with the whole community. Um, we've obviously got also the Premier Group program, um, but, you know, this is all about relationships and it's about getting the cool stuff that's there um, and making it more accessible um, to more people. So that's part technology, it's part the way um, in which um, we interact with you guys, part the way in which you tell us, hey, I've got this really cool presentation, um, how we think a little bit more, perhaps before some of the group meetings, about what's going to come out of those and, and how that really, really cool stuff that's going on could be shared um, with, a, with a wider audience. And if anyone's got any thoughts on how we can do that even better, um, you know, I, I, I'd really love to hear them. No? Nope. Oh, um, sorry, Rob, it's Sean O'Connor. It was Rob, wasn't it? Right. It was indeed. Yeah. Uh, Rob, um, Sean O'Connor here. Uh, something with our user groups, one of the things we're struggling with is well, once you get the users there, you're getting them to uh, speak out or to be willing to share. So once you get them there and you get over the initial silence, if you like, or get them out of their shell a little bit, they then start coming out. But to try and get something presented, everyone was interested in webcasts and live streamed meetings. So potentially that's something we can uh, we can give a go. That, that would be absolutely fabulous. And Sean, we can actually do that in the UK. We've just done it with the... Um We've just done it with the Maximo user group, yeah. um, and we're going to, internally with IBM, we're going to share that kind of with the other groups of how we did that. Um, okay. I mean, that would be and good. Then if we could, could, yeah. I was going to say, if we could pick a subject, um, we've got a couple that our users showed an interest in, maybe we, we set one up and, and give it a go and see, see yeah. how well received it is. Mm -hmm. So that's something Abby can set up for us on the next meeting. Okay. But I, I think I think one of the big things is um I think you and I have talked is like as you say a lot of good things go on down in the user groups yeah so what is maybe someone else talking about in a group say I don't know in AP or somewhere in the US um, do we know no we don't most of the time because it's stuck down in their groups as well yeah. so you may see a topic if you like that someone's talking about in say Sydney. Um, and think, well, hey, that would look really good in my user group meeting. So that's kind of where we want to try and get to. That it's well, actually like a community, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can kind of, because we've got, what, what do we say? We've got 38,000 members, right? We've got 100 and 150 odd user groups. So there's a lot going on out there. There's got to be a lot of synergies, isn't there, across across that many people? Yeah, and something maybe something someone's doing that we haven't thought of um, that can help another group, you know, things like that. So that's kind of where we want to try and get to a little bit more. Okay. That sounds good. Great. Excellent. Sorry, Rod. Over to you. No, absolutely not. Absolutely good. Um, so moving on to the, the next slide. Um, and one of the things um, we need to do is we need to make the site easy to use. We also need to make it more personal. Um, so one of the things we've been looking at technically is um, how do we enable members to find what they're looking for more quickly and easily, but also how do they change the site so that um, one of the things we've had a number of people say is, I don't want everything. Um, I'm interested in X, whatever X happens to be. So one of the things we've been looking at is, is, is building into the platform um, personalization technology so that members can go in and they can personalize uh, at multiple different levels their experience um, that they want from the community, um, who sees what about them 
within the community. Um, also, um, one of the things we've been doing very successfully with, with other communities we'd like to bring into the Tivoli community um, is technology that um, understands members' behavior um, so that the community can respond to that behavior. And rather than saying, here it is, here's everything, try and figure your way through that, um, it's very much, you know, we've understood from your behaviors um, that these are the kind of things that you're looking for. Um, let's um, help you find what you're looking for much more easily and let's tailor that community experience um, to you. And there, as I say, there's two ways of doing that. One is people going in um, uh, and tailoring it themselves. Um, frankly, in our experience with other communities, it's probably happening about 10 or 15% of the time. Um, but what would, what's been very powerful is putting in technology that creates that tailoring. So as you do things, as you show this is what you're interested in, um, basically we're able to tailor um, what you're getting um, from the community. Um, what we've also heard from group leaders is they want it to be easier to create group meetings, so things like uh, meeting templates, etc. cetera. Um, they want it to be easier to contact members, both individually um, and as a group. Um, and they want more advanced ways of um, contacting members. I mean, at the moment, the current platform we're on, um, you can't send um, an email from uh, the group template and include HTML. We absolutely need to do things like that. And we need to make it much easier um, for group leaders to do the things that they want to do, to contact their members, to set up meetings, um, allow them to be more creative using um, technology like HTML. Um, within the group area. Anything else you guys have seen? Anything else you'd like to see? Um, sounds, I mean, it sounds really good, Rob. Sorry, it's me again. You're going to get bored of me eventually, aren't you? Um, Absolutely not. Uh, some of the things that we, we looked at before is, um, so... When we're contacting users or when we're sending out uh, meeting invites and you want, to, you want to send out lots of reminders, there's no way of having a template that's sort of like pre-filled. So what I find myself doing on the, on the current forum sites is creating an HTML or creating the text in the rich editor, rich text editor, then copying the code out. And every time I send a meeting, I have to copy and paste it back in and edit it before I send. Mm -hmm. It's really good if we had some form of a template. So here's a... You know, I've got two or three reminders that I use when sending them out to the users. And at the minute, I'm cutting and pasting them and then having to edit them on the flight. Because well, what, we had, like, pre-canned templates. One of the things we do have um, that we're using with other communities um, is we have um, Citrix um, embedded into um, the community. And that enables us to do all sorts of auto reminders. So once you've set it up, um, you can remind people um, and you can do things. And so once you've set it up initially, it just takes you it, it takes you through a process um, to send out um, those reminders. And we, we can do that for webinars. Um, and we're looking at whether we can um, adjust that to do it for meetings as well. I can't promise that immediately, but it's certainly something um, I'm 100% in agreement with you on um, that, um, you know, we're, we're very, very much looking at. Yeah, but if, and, um, I mean, that would be good. So any form of auto-reminders, but also when you want to tailor, you want to just tailor a little bit. If you've got the bulk of what you sent before, you just need to modify a little bit and send it on or add a bit of extra content. You know, just oh, that you, that, that, that you will be able to do. Um, you know, you'll be able to call up what you sent previously um, and... Um, say, okay, I want to change that word and it's no longer four weeks away, it's two weeks away, so I can change that. I've got a couple of extra speakers that have been really cool. I can add that in. So, yes, all of all of that capability will be, you know, will be there. That's really so good. What, well, that, so what would be what's good, Rod, is um, to understand when that would be there after the call. And maybe mm -hmm. in the leaders' area, we can set up maybe like a bit of a discussion area to keep the conversation going. Um, mm -hmm. And when that's ready, whenever you know we kind of do it, if um, Sean 
and some of the guys on the call, we could maybe use you just as a, you know, to help test it and make sure it's right and just what you want. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. So, yeah. So if, if you know, if there's potential, we can do that before. We all know that you probably have your meetings. Some people might be different. Most of you will have your meetings probably come in April, May time, right? So you'd want yeah. to be able to do it before then. So if we can, if we can like enable and give you the technology, if we can then just double check it and test it with you guys, that'd be fantastic. Just so that we're kind of ready and fit for purpose for when you are ready to use it. Yeah, definitely, definitely up for that. Um, one other area is the um, you mentioned here personalisation to help members find the info that's right for them. Absolutely excellent. That that also reverses to help us target our users with stuff that's of interest to them. So, for example, in the Tivoli space, I've got people that are in like storage, people that like monitoring event, and you know, I think there was we had six tracks at the last user group. So to be able to target them specifically. Um, with something that, so say there's a storage session one of our business partners is offering to run from for, for free. We don't want to spam everybody. It would be good if we could try and, with the information that they get, try and sort out our demographics, if you like. Um, in, 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 in the new platform we, we're um, hoping to introduce and that we're planning on and we're already using for other communities, there's a, there's a very, very um, substantive um, analytics and statistics package um, linked to the platform that allows you to call up. If, if, you know, clearly, if someone hasn't told us what they're interested in, we don't know. Um, that that will happen over time um, as we map their behaviours. We'll then begin to get a um, an understanding of what they're looking for. But if it's there, um, you know, we will be able to um, search on it, provide um, different lists. You know, here's here's your storage list. Um, here's your endpoint list, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that will be very, very easy um, to generate that um, from the community. Um, and so um, one of the things that, that's really important, I think, is um, you know, understanding that, that people don't want everything. You know, if, you're, if you're interested in storage, you're interested in storage. And if you have no other interest, that's really all you want to hear about. And in the same way, when you're promoting a meeting, someone's only interested in storage, we need to be able to get you um, that information and that, that as I say, if, if, with a caveat that if they haven't put it in, we don't know, um, but if they have put it in, um, we do and we can provide that. And if they haven't put it in, we can also learn um, from what they're doing in the community um, who they are and what they're, what they're interested in. And the interesting part of that is that also means that um, if they do change behaviours, because people change what they're doing all the time, um, over time we'll be able to track that. So we'll be able to say, okay, um, we've got this guy in as storage, but everything he's touching at the moment is endpoint management. So perhaps we should be, you know, serving up, um, you know, endpoint management content to him, not storage content to him, because that's everything he's touching within the community at the moment. That sounds good. Definitely a uh, step forward, isn't it? Yep. But bear in mind, um, you know, there's two sides to this. The stuff we have, we can serve up immediately. Um, behaviors typically take, it typically takes six months plus to build um, the body of information um, so that you can really start um, responding to people's behaviors um, in, in a wider sense in, in the community. Okay. So, Sarah, do you want to move on to the next slide? Yep. Okay. One of the other things we've, we've heard from members um, is you know, they like gamification, they like things like ratings. You know, we have the capability in the current community, but we're probably not utilizing it as much as we should. So one of the things we're going to be very, very much, you know, we've been asked to do is, you know, can we, um, you know, put in more sophisticated gamification, more sophisticated um, ratings capabilities? Can we encourage members to use that? Um, as Sarah said, um, you know, right at the start of the call, Sarah Fogley, you know, we also need to 
um, you know, get more and more member content um, into the community. We need to do a better job of highlighting the, the really cool contributors in the community. And one of the other things I'd like to um, start looking at is, um, you know, I've had a number of people saying, you know, have, have, have you thought of podcasts? Um, have you thought of recording and live streaming from the meetings? I think there's, we, you know, there's lots of great content going on that we're not grabbing um, and we're not turning it into really useful content um, for the members of the community. So there's really two sides of this. One is um, getting more um, member content, getting it in more formats, and then, um, you know, allowing... Um, members to be recognized for what they're doing in the community in terms of, um, as I say, gamification, um, highlighting really cool content in the community through ratings. Again, this also helps people find, it makes people feel part of the community and it helps them find, um, you know, really, really cool stuff um, in the community itself. So again, anything you guys have seen where you think, wow, that's really cool, um, you know, would, would love to know what, what that is. Okay. Okay. Um, if we move on to the next slide, um, one of the things, obviously, we need to be thinking about here is the whole social side of things. So we've had, if we've had one, we've had a, a bazillion comments on um, social capabilities. So one of the things um, we want to do is we want to allow members to link their social accounts to the community. Um, you know, some of the things we're doing with other, other communities for allowing people to link in uh, or log in using their um, Facebook logins. Um, one of, you know, we need to um, expand the SEO capabilities and optimization for the community. Um, we want members to be able to link to their other social sites, but in a way that they're in complete control. Um, and so one of the things um, we've been looking at is um, you might want to share um, links um, to other to your other social sites in different ways with different member groups. Um, so how do we enable that to happen in a way that's very highly controlled um, and so all the members feel comfortable um, with what they're sharing? And so there are different, you know, one of the things we're, we're, we're building is different levels of sharing um, with the different groups. So you don't have to share everything with everyone. You know, if you want to share certain things with certain people and other things with other groups, you can actually do that. Um, how do we enable members to, you know, customize their profile, customize what they're doing um, in the community? You know, the social capability is just incredibly important. Um, and there's not enough of it um, on the current platform. Um, and, and we, you know, we need to enhance that. And we need to make that... Um, you know, absolutely what the members um, are looking for. Um, but the other side of it, which we learned from the other communities, it's, it's not just about those links, the linkage, the, the, the social. It's also so important um, that you give people the feeling that they're in control. And it's not like you hit a button and suddenly everything I have is exposed to the world. Um, I can have complete control of it. So there are multiple levels um, of control um, on um, the social linkage side um, for the members of the community. Any questions on that? Okay. So do we want to move on to the next slide, Sarah? Um, the new platform we've been developing, one of the things that, that's also very important is um, it's modular. And what that means is that all of the capabilities of the platform um, can be um, updated, uprated um, very, very easily. 
um, if something new comes out which is really cool community wise um, we can very easily um, and very quickly embed that um, into the platform. One of the problems we've got with the current platform um, from Intelligent is um, you're kind of stuck with it the way it is. Um, what we've been doing in, in the new platform we've been developing with other communities is getting it to the point which throughout every capability um, is a module that's bolted into the platform that can then be stripped out, it can be replaced, it can be added to. So it allows us to really easily and rapidly develop new capabilities. Um, with other groups we run, we've also been looking at things like um, virtual focus groups. Um, we've got together with people on a regular basis. would really, really love you guys to be part of something like that. So we can, cons you know, we can on a regular basis talk about what we're doing, how we're doing it, how we improve it, how we make it better. Um, really understand from the behavior patterns within the community what members are looking for. Um, and, and benchmark against um, other communities. You know, one of the things I'd like to do, so we get the, the benchmarking right. I'd love your input on where else do you go? Um, what other um, communities are you looking at? What other sites are you looking at for information? What are they delivering? Um, what can we learn from what they're doing? Um, and how can we then take that learning um, and bring it into um, the Tivoli user community? So we want to, in, in summary, what we want to do is provide a much better um, member experience, much better leader experience, but at the same time move to a platform that doesn't say, okay, here's where we are, that's it, and anything else is going to be a massive, even a grunt of change, but move to a platform um, which says, okay, if there are cool things happening elsewhere, it's not a massive, even a grunt. It's simply because of the modular approach to what we're doing, it's very simple and very easy to change the capabilities and change what we're doing um, with the platform. And that's, for me, is you know what we've learned from the members. It's what they want, um, uh, and, and you know uh, it's what they're look what they're looking for. Any other thoughts, anyone? No. Looking good. I like the idea of virtual focus groups. No. Well, we'd love to have you guys part of that. We really would. And I know um, Sarah would really, um, you know, love that. You know, you guys are the heart of the community. It's, um, you know, we want to build a regular mechanism to be able to talk to you, to be able to interact with you, and, and, and absolutely um, get your feedback at multiple levels. Any other thoughts, anyone? So do you think this is the right approach, guys? Yes. Yep. Yep. Cool. Well then, Sarah, if I can hand back hand back to you. All right. Sounds good. This is Sarah Maria. Yeah, you manage it. Yeah, sure. So I think um, just leading on to that, because I know, like, obviously with different presentations, what might be a good idea is to go into your survey next, because that kind of – one of the reasons Sarah put this survey together is, again, we kind of want to get it's, – it's all good and handy, us guys thinking about what you want, what you need. But as a council um, that is supporting the community, it's good to kind of run these things past you and get your feedback and hopefully your members' feedback as well. So um, one, of the, one of the ideas Sarah come up with was, um, you know, um, doing this survey so that um, we could get some information from you. So Sarah, I'll hand that over to you so you can kind of just say a bit more about it. Absolutely. So we have a, a brief survey, uh, just about 10 or 12 questions about the experiences that you've had within the community really as long as you've been a member. So, you know, not don't just think about the current website, but, you know, the previous and what you would like to see in the community moving forward. So what have you liked? What has caused you some pain points with your group? What are the great experiences that you've had? 
uh, from a user group standpoint. Um, you know, tell us everything. I've got a so, little bit of noise going on. Yeah. Can then, is there any thought not on mute? Could you go on mute? And what if it's you because you've just spoke? If you could go on mute, that'd be great. I, I am on mute, Sarah, so... Okay, I just thought it might have been you because we did have the noise before. Yeah, we've got... That was almost like phones in someone's pocket. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think that's better. Great. So I'll just repeat that in case someone didn't hear. Um, we do have a, a link to a survey here, which I will share in our follow-up communications, and I will post in the council area. A survey, just okay. 10 or 12 questions of the you know, positive experiences that you've had in the community, what you'd really like from a user group standpoint, from a content standpoint, um, from leading groups, um, and then things that have caused you some pain points. Um, what have you struggled with, both from not only a technology perspective, but perhaps recruiting new members into your group, hosting meetings? Tell us everything. Um, you know, and, and we will incorporate that into all of our plans moving forward and can also reach out to you individually and get together with you to come up with some customized solutions, uh, you know, for things that you're working on. So uh, we really appreciate your feedback and would also appreciate it if you shared this with any of your groups. Um, and I can draft a, a short little note for you to just pop into an email and send out to your group. We'd really appreciate that. There is an incentive to complete complete the survey by December 18th, and that is the chance to win a $50 gift card. Um, so, again, I'll send that link out and would uh, really appreciate it if you complete it and share it with your members. Okay. Thank you. So I'm just going to pop back over to um, – I have a, a few things to share with you about interconnect. We've had a lot of progress in planning for this new uh, exciting event, which will be a combination of a couple of different IBM events in the past. So for community activities, we have two that uh, if you could mark your calendar – uh, add these to your agenda if you're planning to attend the conference. On Monday afternoon from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., we will be celebrating our IBM and Community Heroes. All customers, business partners, all members of the community uh, and customers are invited to attend this reception. 4 o'clock in the South Seas Ballroom, I will send out uh, an invite so that you can add this to your calendar. We will be presenting for the first time community awards to the civil user community. So we have five categories in which there will be three winners per category. Uh, user Group Leader of the Year, Liaison of the Year, Content Contributor of the Year. So we really want to call out Members who've gone above and beyond for the community all year long uh, and have really made it uh, what it is. There'll also be a fun photo booth. The theme will be superheroes. We'll have some games, themed cocktails, and snacks. So that will be from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. on Monday. Would love for all of you to attend. On Wednesday, we will also be hosting a lunch during the regularly scheduled lunch hour in Palm H. We're arranging to have some speakers uh, come and speak on different topics from both IBM as well as some community representatives. So perhaps a council member from one of the communities will speak, you know, about the, the value and the benefits and, you know, lessons learned and big wins about what they've had, you know, in the community. We anticipate with the three different communities who will be participating, uh, WebSphere, Rational, and Tivoli, that we could have up to 80 attendees. And what we would like to do is we would like to have everyone sit more by geography rather than by community. We'd really like to see leaders, council members, intermingling with others uh, and discussing their experiences in their respective community. We'll have some fun trivia to kind of get the conversation going. 
uh, we'll actually have some forms that if you fill out and if you all get the correct answers, you will receive additional entries to our big giveaways, which I'll talk about in just a second. So again, uh, community reception, 4 p.m. Monday night, Wednesday, uh, leader lunch during the regularly scheduled hour at noon. Um, so I'll just pause for a minute, and if there's anything that, uh, Sarah, you'd like to add or Rod? Um, no, I don't think so. I think you're doing a great job. But it'd be interesting, um, anyone in the community or anyone on the call, if you're going, if you think this looks good and what your thoughts are. I know that if I look at most of you on the list there, most of you have been in the past. Um, so we've tried to kind of really jazz it up a little bit um, and obviously work with the other brands soon as it's going to be such a big conference. Um, and the idea is rather than have three different user group areas that we've just kind of got one thing going on for everybody and hopefully we can learn potentially maybe, well, you guys can learn what, what they're doing their user groups, what Rational doing theirs and maybe there's a, a leader from one of them groups within your country, you know, that you could talk to or um, maybe in the future, you know, if you had to cross user group meetings, whatever way you kind of want to do it. So trying to enable again that you guys can talk um, to a wider community. Thanks, Sarah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I think it'd be fun. I think it'd be really good fun. I agree. Oh, yeah, we're going to have some... So, oh, sorry. so is that you, Yoss? I just had a question. Are uh, no user sessions for uh, during the Interconnect uh, somewhere, been... like, like, like last year? When we did the um, when we did the like stories user group meeting and things, you mean? For example. No, because well, we have okay. got Maximo and we have got Endpoint, and the reason for that is we've tried it for two years, and as you know, during the storage one, <laughs> we had one person turn up, right? And I would presume I that. And to be fair, when we looked across it all, um, if, if you look at if you look at what happened last year, it's because the tent is getting so much bigger in itself. So you've got the business partner yeah. part going on on the Sunday. You've got other things. You've got receptions. So we know that the Maximo and the Endpoint are quite successful. So I guess the customers that want to go to that, that's the most important thing. But you saw what happened last year. <coughs> so it's definitely something we can like revisit again if if we want to. But this year we decided not to because we've got so much more, you know, we've got the free brands, the bigger conference. So we thought it might be a bit better to kind of go down on the level of this where we kind of encourage you guys to meet other leaders from other user groups and do something slightly different. Yeah? Okay. If there's anything else that you think, I mean, do you think we should have carried on with that or...? It's a lot of resource to have only sort of two or three people rock up on the day, right? Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any comments on that? How many people will join from the user community to interconnect? Do you know? Any ID? I don't know what we've got at the moment. Do you know, Sarah? don't have an exact an exact figure on that, but we are between the three communities. Um, you know, we have close to 100,000 members. So hopefully yeah. we will see a large portion of that at the show. And what about okay. the user community leaders? I think most, so I, we've got 100, and, well, we've got 150 groups. Rational have got about 130, mm -hmm. is it so, I think? Yep. With, um, so there's about, I mean, we've got about 400 groups, so that we rounded out 400 leaders, unless there's more than one leader per group, right? So I think when we've worked it out, we've found about 60 to 80, we're looking at at least, which is quite nice. Uh, okay. So it's kind of like, I guess we're just putting a bit of a different flavour to it, because obviously the event is slightly different as well, with it being so big. So we can How many people are... How many people already registered for from the user group leaders? Do you know? Any don't idea? Know, don't know at this moment in time, but we can. Sarah and I are on um, 
weekly and fortnightly different calls for Interconnect at the moment. So when we get that number, we'll post it into the council area once we start. We start this forum up for Interconnect and about the changes we want to make on the website. And mm -hmm. we'll put that information next. So everything you're asking today, we're capturing, and we'll put that up when we have it. Okay. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. We still that question. You know, it's, it's that question you're asking. You know, like some people still haven't registered. They're trying to get sign off, things like that. So okay. well, we should have an idea very soon. Any other questions around that? Okay, Sarah, do you want to continue? Absolutely. Okay. So we uh, are planning for some fun uh, giveaways and handouts. We're putting together a very nice bag uh, that will feature a logo uh, with all of our communities featured there. Um, so that's just a quick mock-up of what the design will be. Again, we want to bring all three of these communities together and encourage cross-community engagement and, and talking amongst the leaders. We'll have multiple giveaways a day. One really fun item that we're excited about is called the Dodo Case. This is something that turns your phone into a virtual experience. So you put your phone into this case, um, which is just a small little cardboard box, and all of a sudden uh, you have a virtual experience. Also uh, giving away some sort of 3D TV converter, so you can turn your TV into a 3D experience, and then uh, some great wearables. Fitbit, um, Apple Watch type items, we will be giving away every day, and we will uh, provide thorough details on all of the ways to enter. Um, you'll be able to enter every day, multiple times. Uh, we are also going to have a little cards throughout the show that you can decode uh, for additional entries. And uh, with that, if you have any ideas, things that you'd like to see, some really fun items perhaps that you've seen at other conferences, please do not hesitate to let us know. So I'll pause for just a second before I hand it over to Laura. Anything to add there? Thank you. More gifts. <laughs> Nice gift okay. as well, right? Something like a wearable, yeah, nice, nice gift. Yeah, exactly. The Apple Watch, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. So hopefully we can get like the buzz around to interconnect a little bit more with the user community. Let people know that probably aren't members of the community, which helps you guys as well with your group, right? So we can kind of spread that word. There could be members of Rational or WebSphere that are maybe using Tivoli products. So, um, so yeah, so that's why we're trying to do it kind of a bit more fun, a bit more interactive, and get everyone speaking about our wonderful communities. Yeah. Let's go for it. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to hand it off to Laura Flatley. Thank you, Sarah. So, as Sarah Kylie mentioned earlier, we are really trying to uh, change the conversation in a lot of our communications. Um, as she mentioned, it's very IBM focused at the moment, and we really want to create a permanent section in our monthly newsletter. That's an area focused on the voice of the council based on what's happening in the community. So our idea for January is to have um, one of you on a volunteer basis, it can switch every month, um, blog about what's happening. So next month we'd like someone to blog about Interconnect, um, mostly talking about why they're going to Interconnect, what kind of things they're, you're planning on doing, and your experiences in the past with Pulse and other conferences. So if anyone's interested in writing a brief blog, um, just in your tone of voice, nothing too formal, we'd really appreciate it, and we think it's really important that our community members know that we have a council that's meeting every month and is concerned about the well-being of the community and also has a huge role in the direction.
So, so way back when, um, probably about a year ago or two years ago, and I know that um, Andrew's not on the call, we all kind of discussed about the council and their input into the community. And one of the things we used to have was that David Murray used to um, do the voice of the customer in the newsletter. And it kind of goes back to what I said right at the beginning of the call. We don't want the community to turn into an IBM community because that's not what it is. This community is about you guys as leaders. You know, we're always, I'm always hearing from you. We want to stay kind of separate, but we want to work with IBM, and you're grateful that IBM sponsors it and that back to enable you with the tools. But we've got to kind of get back a little bit this year, I think, on, you know, the news that are not just being content from IBM or about webcasts. It's got to have some kind of flavor from you as a council. Uh, um, and as we move forward with the website, it'd be great if we could kind of have some information on that from you guys. So if there's a specific product area, maybe in the storage zone or the APM zone, that we can ask you to blog. And Laura's willing to help you as much as she can. Um, Laura's our digital expert, so she's got all the skills and knows what to do. So it'd be great if you guys can kind of just stand up sometimes and say you, you, you've got a plan or an idea of what you'd like to input. We'd really appreciate it. Is it worth us doing a... Um, I know um, Robin Ray set up some uh, sort of survey for us that we run out to our community. And uh, yeah. I think, you know, maybe we could... Uh, if, if each of our local community uh, leaders were to put out... Uh, give you some, you know, potentially ask some pertinent questions that would give us something to put into that space, and that would be interesting to the the global community. Um, yeah. Not quite sure what those questions are yet. I'm just racking through my brain, but um, you know, we could certainly get some interesting facts from that wide audience if we if all local uh, communities sent out a survey. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely a way to do it. Does that sound like an idea? Yeah, absolutely. I'll give it a bit. I'll give that a bit more thought, and uh, I guess the uh, the site we can communicate with other uh, global community leaders um, in a forum, can we? And then just to talk it through, maybe get some pertinent questions. Yes, we have the. So, so we're talking to leaders rather than members. Yes. So, yeah, let's talk to the leaders, and then we can get them to you know go out to the local groups. Yeah. So we have the. So you know we have the leader area. Yep. So if we start something off in there, ASAP, Sarah, or Laura, actually, if we can set something up in there today with the forum after this call, and then if we post out to the leaders that it comes from you guys and what we want to try and do, then we can start that really quite soon, yeah? Okay. Yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. Does that, does that sound all right, Sean? Yeah, sounds right to me. I don't know if anyone else is, uh, thinks that's a good idea. I think, I guess, I guess where I'm coming from and speaking to most of you is to try and make the community a bit more for you guys. You know, so we're, we're you know, I guess, Sean, you'd rather hear from Harold or someone like that rather than me all the time, right? <laughs> um, because because that's, that's the interest. It's, it's, you guys are using the site. You guys are there for whatever reason you're there for, to create events, to get information from IBM, to get information from other members, to find out what they're doing in their user groups that, and, and, and potentially use that content. I know that, Paul, you weren't there this, this month, would you, but in your group's meeting, I know that you had someone from Atlanta um, present at the UK and I Maximo user group. And that was because Sam had seen a presentation, I believe, in the global user group. So that's where we can kind of really start using the community as a wider community rather than just you guys in your group. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions around that? No. Any more questions? Today in general, like where you've got the Bacti folks on the call? No, and I have another call, so I'm dropping off. Okay, thanks, Paul. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye. Okay, so what we'll do after this call then, we'll set up a kind, we'll set up some links 
We're we'll posting the council area and we'll send out an email to show you where they all are. And then, Laura, if we start looking at the um, leader area and what we can do with Sean's comments. Sure. Yep. It will be great after this call as well, um, what you guys think about moving to this new platform and what you heard from Rod. The presentation we have recorded and the replay will be available in the council area and the slides are also in the council area. As yep. usual, if you've got any um, comments or any questions, just email me and I'll get back to you. However, I am actually going away tomorrow evening for two weeks. So um, you've also got Sarah's email, and Sarah is your community manager, so you can email Sarah or Robin or Laura. I'm sure they'll all answer you. Okay. Absolutely. Sarah. Have a nice holiday, Sarah. Thank Sarah, you, I will. Naomi. I have one question. Hi, Naomi. Yeah, sure. Hi, uh, my question is about the 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 Tiver user groups discount uh yep. discount campaign code for for the interconnect next year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there available after December thirteenth? So it is, yeah. So so that we do the early bird first and once uh -huh. the early bird is finished, then we can put up the discount for the user community. Oh, I see. So it's a two hundred two hundred dollar discount or I, Sarah, what did we say it was? Do you remember? So you'll it's still get the before. early bird rate. Yeah. You'll still be able to get that early bird rate, I believe, until the middle of February. Um, as long as you use the link that's posted on the Tivoli user community, you'll mm -hmm. still be able to access that after uh, December 31st. Okay. But what, okay. Was, what, was the amount on the, what was the amount on the discount rate for the tax this year? It was the same, wasn't it, as we've used in past years, right? Uh, yeah, I believe uh, the early bird rate is 1895, but I will send out a note uh, to so make wait, sure that Sarah. everyone. So that's the early bird, right? And then once the early bird finishes, we have a discounted to the user community rate. You was on uh, call, wasn't it? Did you know what they said it was? I, th I believe it's the same as it was last year. But for everyone on the call, right. I can I can send that out to you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay, we'll thank send you. Out. Thank clarification you. and okay. how to get that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you, everyone, and I hope you all have a fantastic holidays in December. And we look forward yeah. to working with you in 2015 and making um, making this a lot more slicker, a lot more easier. Let's get our member rates up. Let's give you guys what you want, and here's to a really successful 2015. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank Cheers. Sarah. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Happy Christmas. Bye. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Bye. Happy New Year. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, bye.